Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rick Wilson, Minister of Indigenous Relations, and I'm happy to be joining you today from uh, Treaty 7, and also recognize the Métis people who share a, a deep connection with this land. This past summer, I joined uh, Premier Kenny and Minister Savage out at Enoch Cree Nation uh, to talk about the site rehabilitation program. There's awesome work happening between Alberta's government, industry, and Indigenous communities. Indigenous-led businesses see chances to get people working while rehabilitating lands that in some cases were abandoned decades ago. It means a lot to communities to see these lands come back and that their people are making that happen. They are our partners in prosperity because prosperity is about sustainable economic development, not at the expense of the environment or indigenous livelihoods. It's about managing natural resource development with the people who are affected to it, by it. And it's about planning for a healthy future for generations to come through sound reclamation practices. We have a slate of speakers today to tell us more about this latest period of site rehabilitation program. Minister of Energy, Sonia Savage, will bring us today's announcement. And she'll be followed by Natural Resource Canada Minister, Seamus O'Regan. Chief uh, Greg Desjardins of Frog Lake First Nation in East Central Alberta also joins us today to talk about what this program means for his community. And then Elizabeth Aquin, the President of Petroleum Services Association of Canada, will talk with us about the industry support of this project. And then after that, we're going to open it up uh, to the media for questions. So, Minister Savage, please join us. Give me one minute to put my mask on. Minister. Well, thank you, Minister Wilson, and hello, everyone. A very, very warm welcome to my good friend, Minister O'Regan, and a warm welcome to Chief Desjardins, Elizabeth Aquin, who, whose organization has been alongside us the, from the start as we develop the site rehabilitation program from scratch in a matter of weeks to support an industry pummeled by the pandemic and the price collapse. In fact, PSAC and other industry members embarked on a, some, some significant out-of-the-box thinking to contribute to the genesis of this program, which serves the dual purpose of getting oil field service companies and their employees back to work, and at the same time, restoring the land. And on that note, today's announcement is really about collaboration and partnership. Partnership with industry, partnership with the federal government that supported this th program through a $1 billion funding agreement, and partnership with, the indigenous, with indigenous leadership and communities who will be vital partners in Alberta's post-pandemic recovery. This is all about doing what's right to support Alberta's hard-hit workers, the environment and respect for the land, air and water that our indigenous communities and leaders teach us to hold so sacred. So let's get to today's announcement. Since launching the program in May, $400 million in funding has already been made available to hundreds of Alberta-based companies. At the same time, the program has accelerated the cleanup of oil and gas sites and created widespread economic benefits in the communities across the province. And today, I'm delighted to an announce an additional $400 million in funding, funding that will make a positive and enduring impact across the province. Of this funding, $100 million will go toward cleanup of inactive oil and gas sites on First Nations and Métis settlements across Alberta. This further demonstrates the government's commitment to ensure Indigenous businesses and communities play a meaningful role in Alberta's post-pandemic energy strategy. This round of the program enables First Nations and Métis settlements to identify priority sites for cleanup using the allotted funds. In total, it includes $85 million for First Nations reserves and $15 million for Métis settlements, to work with licensees to close sites located in and around their lands. And the details of this round were developed alongside Indigenous communities, Indigenous businesses, the Indian Resource Council, and the Métis Settlements General Council to make sure that it met their needs. 
We have also, in the program, included Indigenous business incentives that have contributed to growing Indigenous participation in the program, and we've established a dedicated liaison to answer questions from Indigenous companies during the application process, helping to support the completion of eligible applications. And we'll continue to, to work closely with our Indigenous partners through the SRP and other energy initiatives to ensure that they, like all Albertans, are in a position to benefit from our economic recovery efforts. Meanwhile, the other $300 million of the $400 million announced today will be allotted to oil and gas producers who paid for closure work over the past two years. This, this approach supports producers who have been good corporate and environmental citizens by actively working to clean up sites despite the tough economic times. While the funding is allocated on behalf of producers, grants still go directly to the oil field service con companies conducting the work. This is the program's largest grant period and it's designed to give the funding and time to work on closure projects of all scopes and sizes. Now I'd like to take a moment to speak to the real reason the site rehabilitation prog program has been so successful, and that is cl collaboration. We are very pleased that the federal government has supported this initiative. And just as importantly, I'm grateful this, for the support and cooperation Alberta continues to receive from Minister Seamus O'Regan. To quote Minister O'Regan, the country is not going to recover unless the oil and gas sector recovers. That sentiment is clearly reflected in his support for this program, and I'm sure Minister O'Regan will speak to that in more detail in a few moments. Now, the energy sector is complex, and it's well documented that there are some areas where the Alberta government and the federal government haven't always seen eye to eye. But in many areas, such as this one, we are in perfect alignment. We are both supportive of responsible resource development, which of course necessitates stringent environmental cleanup and the reclamation of oil and gas sites. Now, in this program so far, we've had positive impact from the first four programs. In fact, we received an email from an oil field service contractor that told a story about a motel owner in the southeast part of our province. In this situation, the motel owner told the contractor that the business was just days away from being forced to close its doors. And then the contractor called and booked rooms for several months of lodging so that they could perform work under this program. This, simply put, would not have been possible without the site rehabilitation program and it would not have been possible without the support of everyone here today. This is just one example of so many positive feedbacks that we've received and the ripple effects of this program that it's having right across the province. This program is about jobs, it's about supporting Alberta families, and we're far from being done. Aside from these key objectives, we believe the ongoing success of the site rehabilitation program by helping to manage oil and gas liabilities will help build the foundation for a sustainable energy sector in our province for decades to come. With that, I'll now ask Minister O'Regan to bring remarks on behalf of the Government of Canada. Thank you, Sonia. Hello, everyone. I'm joining you from my home, uh, the island of Newfoundland, which is the ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq and Beata peoples. It is also one of Canada's three oil producing provinces. Uh, though I'd rather be in the room there with you all, Sonia, and I can't wait to get out to Alberta again. Um, it was it was over a year ago now that I was named Minister of Natural Resources, and as soon as I was sworn in, but before I'd even appeared in front of the TV cameras, Minister Savage texted me to ask me when I was heading, when I was coming out to Alberta. So I texted back, "How's tomorrow?" Uh, and I was on the plane the next day, and we've been working very closely together ever since. And today is a testament to that. Today is important. It's important for our oil and gas workers. It's important for their families. It's important for the environment. In fact, it's been an important week for oil and gas workers right across Western Canada. 
On Tuesday, Saskatchewan announced opportunities for Indigenous communities and businesses to participate in their well cleanup program. Yesterday, BC announced the second round of funding for their well cleanup program. And today, Alberta is announcing the next two rounds of funding for their own program, the Site Rehabilitation Program. So, like I said, today is important. It has been a rough year for our oil and gas industry in this country. And that is true here in my home province of Newfoundland and Labrador, and it is true in Alberta. The double whammy of the pandemic and the global price war, the cancellation of KXL, these things have had real consequences for real people in your province. So our government has been there for Albertans. Since the beginning of the pandemic, our government has supported oil and gas workers across Canada with the federal wage subsidy. It's helped more than 500,000 Albertans keep their jobs. The CERB has supported one in four Albertans at some point since March, one in four. We've been there for Albertans, we've been there for the industry. On TMX, we approved it, we bought it, we're building it. It's already created over 7,000 jobs. On Nova Gas, NGTL 2021, we approved it. Thousands more jobs created in Alberta. And Line 3, we approved it. Another 7,000 jobs created there. And of course, today's announcement. Cleaning up orphan and inactive wells, cleaning up the environment, getting oil and gas workers back to work because we need them. We need these workers. They're the ones who are going to build Canada's energy future. They're the ones who figured out how to get oil out of sand. They are the ones who are going to lower our emissions. They are the ones who are going to get us to net zero by 2050. We need all hands on deck. That means everyone. Today's announcement is particularly important because of its focus on First Nations and Métis settlements. When you include everyone, you get the best. I've said it before, I'll say it again. As Sonia just said, the road to net zero goes through Alberta. It goes through oil and gas. Oil and gas is part of our government's climate plan, a plan that will see Canada meet and exceed our Paris targets. Because Canadian oil and gas is our country's biggest private investor in clean technology, $1 billion every year. And business isn't just doing that because it's the right thing to do. Uh, it's the right thing to do. They're doing it because it's the smart thing to do. Lowering our emissions increases our competitiveness. The market's changing. Investors are making clear choices. They are investing in jurisdictions that are acting on climate change. And they are divesting from those that, in their view, aren't doing enough. Industry understands this. They are following the money. They are skating to where the puck is going. In fact, Minister Savage and I recently sat down with the CEOs of some of the majors in the oil sands, and they showed us how they plan on getting to net zero. They're serious about this. We are too. And I'm confident that we'll get there. Because our oil and gas workers have the ingenuity and determination and the work ethic to get it done. And we need that same ingenuity, that same hard work and determination that our oil and gas workers bring to their jobs every day. We need it to build Canada's low emissions energy future, to increase competitiveness, to build a growing and prosperous economy that works for all Canadians in every part of the country. So while we still face a hard winter, spring is coming. Though it may not feel like it may not feel like it today in Calgary. But spring is coming. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So today with this announcement, let's double down on our common mission. Net zero emissions by 2050. A national economy that continues to grow and prosper. And a low emissions future that leaves no one behind. It's a lot. But it's ambitious, but we're Canada. That's what we do. Thank you. And I think um, I, I think uh, Chief Desjardins is going to speak now. Oh, first of all, I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful for the Creator for allowing me to get up. I'm also very thankful for the bounty of Mother Earth and all she provides for us. And it's our job as human beings to take care of her, and she'll take care of us. You know, uh, what this announcement means to, uh, to the First Nations, it's bigger than, uh, you know, the employment. You know, we're, we're creating another generation of, of hard workers. 
where the children can see mom and dad going to work. That's important. You know, we are good people. And this also reduces the liability that many, many oil companies swept through our First Nations and became profitable. But today is today, and we're thankful for today. Also for the for the Métis settlements, our brothers, you know, we're able to clean up these wells and to return the land to its natural grass state, where hopefully one day again we can gather medicines and we can have our children ride through these fields on their ponies. You know, I'm thankful for today to share a few words with all of you. You know, because this allows us to get our member own companies, our member joint ventures, and boots on the ground, our service rigs. We have a partnership with Emmy Well Servicing. Six nations own that company. 98% First Nations work with that company. You know, that's something that we're very proud of. We have the know-how, and as First Nations, we are part of the solution here in Canada. It's, it's time that the governments work with us. You know, we are very smart and resilient people. We know how to create that balance that Canada is looking for. You know, so I wanted to share that much with each and every one of you out there that I'm thankful for today on behalf of the First Nations and the Métis people across Alberta here. This is a great announcement for us that we can remove this liability create some employment, and also create another generation of hard workers. With that, I shake hands with each and every one of you, and thank you for this opportunity. And now, I believe uh, uh, Elizabeth Aiken from PSAC will speak. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Minister, and uh, thank you for including PSAC in today's announcement. Uh, the Petroleum Services Association of Canada, or PSAC, um, is very pleased to be part of this collaborative announcement between the governments of Canada and Alberta for additional funding allotments to the site rehabilitation program. This important stimulus funding has demonstrated government's understanding of the urgent need for jobs in the vital oil field services sector that PSAC represents. The significant amount of total program funds and the speed with which the government of Alberta rolled out the first tranche of funding for the program clearly confirmed the recognition of this situation. This program also aligns well with PSAC's advocacy to federal and provincial governments for a mechanism to accelerate decommissioning of and reclamation of orphan and active wells sites uh, to provide the much needed jobs for the oil field services sector uh, following plunging capital investment in the oil and gas industry over a multi-year downturn that began in 2014. This program also achieves positive environmental outcomes, as you have mentioned, and provides valuable economic benefits to rural communities and regions, um, one of which you, Minister Savage, referenced a little bit earlier. Service sector companies do not earn any revenue from the sale of the oil and gas, only on the services and products that they provide to their customers, the oil and gas companies. Between, 20, between 35 and 50 types of services are employed in the process of decommissioning wells, fi facilities, pipelines, along with the remediation and reclamation of associated lands. And so this program benefits a meaningful portion of companies in the sector. PSEC has also been pleased to participate in the Alberta Government's Industry Advisory Committee established for the SRP as industry and government learn to work together under the program. The oil and gas industry understands the importance of economic opportunities for Indigenous people and communities as well as the restoration of land and continues to build meaningful relationships. PSAC members look forward to continuing to work with Indigenous companies through this program and others and through existing relationships that have been forged in this industry over many years. PSEC is pleased to include Indigenous companies in our membership, including representation on our board of directors, in fact, PME Well Service that the Chief just mentioned, and our closure committee. 
This program also helps ensure the survival of oil field services and manufacturing companies, along with the retention of key skills and expertise through these challenging times. This is critical as the sector provides the innovation and technology to oil and gas companies to responsibly develop our resources. Resources which contribute to our quality of life and provide the basis for many products for our homes, sports activities and hospitals, including personal protective equipment that has become ever more significant in the face of the pandemic. The innovation and technology developed by this vital sector is needed to continue the responsible development of our resources to lower carbon emissions and demonstrate continued progress on our ESG record for investment. Increased investment will be required, not only for domestic production, but also to pursue opportunities to address the growing demand for natural gas for LNG, for the nascent blue hydrogen industry, and for exports. PSAC is proud to be the united voice of Canada's oil field services sector that is a leader in innovation and technology and responsible development, providing jobs and economic benefits to all Canadians from coast to coast to coast. When Canada, Canadian energy succeeds, Canada succeeds. We are pleased that the governments of Canada and Alberta understand this and are working collaboratively to assist the sector during these unprecedented times through important programs such as the Site Rehabilitation Program. Thank you. Our remarks, we'll open it up now to media questions on the phone line. We we'll limit this to one question and one follow-up from each reporter. We ask you to identify who you're directing your question to. Operator, please open the phone lines. Our first question comes from Emma Graney of the Globe and Mail. Yeah, good day. Uh, this question, I think, is from Minister Savage and perhaps also Elizabeth at PSAC as well. Um, there were obviously some clunky problems with the program when it first rolled out in Alberta and in other provinces as well. I'm curious if you would um, rate how you think it has been on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, how you think it's rolled out so far and where some of the biggest challenges have been. Well, I, I think I can start with that. When, when it was first announced uh, back in May, we rolled out the program very quickly because it is, it is a job creation program as well as an environmental reclamation program. So it was important to get it out the door very quickly and get contracts out and get money in hands and get people to work. So we rolled it out very quickly. At the same time, we knew that there would be, uh, there would be improvements to be made along the way, and uh, that's why we set up an advisory committee with industry advisory committee, an indigenous round table, to tell us how can we make the next rounds better. And uh, I think that today's announcement rolling out with the four, new $400 million tranche will be very important to, to that. I think it's also important to note the, the benefit that it's had on the ground so far. We've had over $310 million in contracts awarded. We have over 600 Alberta-based companies that have received contracts, and it's created over 1,500 jobs on the ground. So that's, that's success. And the, uh, the, uh, uh, the letter that I mentioned earlier from the hotel in southeast Alberta that was going out of business, it was about to shut its door until workers being employed for the site rehabilitation program were able to, uh, to fill that ho hotel, not only putting people back to work, but keeping, keeping community businesses uh, alive. So I would say this program, I'm, I'm very pleased with the rollout. Have there been, been areas to improve and ways to get uh, funding out, to, uh, to out, out quicker? Absolutely. And that's why we've put the uh, Industry Advisory Committee together. I, may, I think I can see Elizabeth nodding. She might want to add a bit to this. You're... Sorry. There you are. We can hear you. Yes. Thank you. It's a year later and we're still having to remember to unmute. Um, yes, uh, I, have to, I have to say that kudos are due to the Alberta government um, that recognize the urgent need for jobs and the lightning speed with which they came out with the first tranche of the program uh, it, a week later. Um, 
you know, with any pilot program, and I think that's what we could refer to the first tranche as, you know, there are always a few, um, uh, there are a few hiccups along the way, a few wrinkles, and, and as well, because industry and government was learning to work together. Most government programs takes months to to roll out and so i think that the the uh, alberta government and the department officials they we saw them work tirelessly to resolve all of these wrinkles and i think it has paid off we've got folks working this is an this is a certainly a significant program and and i think that um it's a success that the jobs are being created in this way Okay, as a follow-up to that then, um, I, guess, I think this might actually be, again, for Mr. Savage, perhaps Elizabeth, Elizabeth as well, but obviously the, uh, the issue of these inactive wells, orphan wells, dormant wells, there's more than like 200,000 of them across Western Canada. How do you make sure that we do not end up in the same position where taxpayers end up on the hook once again for cleaning up these assets when oil and gas companies walk away? Or, alternatively, when there's a downturn and they just don't bother doing it. I know you're reforming the process now, but how are you going to make sure that this does not happen again? Well, I think to start with, I'd, I'd like to highlight this program is going to, to help significantly address the, uh, the problem of, of, of a very large inventory of inactive wells. This will help, uh, help uh, move some of that inventory along to closure. But I also want to highlight that last summer we, we announced a liability management uh, framework. And we were the first government in Alberta to tackle the issue. Boy, I wish it, that that framework was announced five years ago. I wish it was announced 10 years ago because it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's going to help now to get the inventory chipped away and down and, and wells closed. But it's going to take some time because for many, many years it was a problem that was growing and other governments wouldn't, wouldn't address it. But we have brought in a, a program with, uh, with an inventory reduction to chip away and to get these, these inactive wells brought to closure. Operator, please put through the next caller. Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm wondering, Minister Savage, if, if you can give us um, some more details about the program so far. We've obviously heard concerns about applications um, and the application process uh, being over overwhelmed um, at times. Can you tell us the total number of applications that have been approved or the percentage of applications that have gone ahead so far? Well, we've had, uh, in the very first round of applications, we had over 36,000 uh, companies apply for, for, uh, for applications, which was a very, very much overwhelmed the system to get through those applications. Now we have, uh, we have uh, of course, caught up with that. We've put out the first four rounds of the program. Uh, $310 million of programming has been, has been awarded to over 600 Alberta-based companies, creating 1,500 jobs. So it's, uh, uh, and that was with the first four rounds of $400 million. The next four rounds that, or the next two rounds of $400 million we've announced today. And I think it's important to note this, this round five of the site rehabilitation program is a very large $300 million tranche that uh, is, a, is a period, uh, funding period designed with industry to help get money out the door very quickly to get these large, large programs closed to get uh, a significant amount of inventory uh, off the books and move towards closure. Operator, please put through our last caller. Our final question comes from Rafi Bujikanian of CBC. Uh, hi there. My initial question is for both ministers. I wonder, could you talk about the idea of, you know, taxpayer funding going to fund the cleanup of uh, private oil companies and, and why, in principle, you, you think that's okay? Well, I think to, to start with, uh, this is this uh, funding is is going towards the service sector 
for the service industry, the contractors, the uh, the the men and women who who perform site closure work. It's not going to the oil and gas industry. It's going to the service sector to create jobs. And at the same time, it has the the added benefit of uh, site remediation and environmental cleanup. This is uh, going to accelerate the work that industry is already doing to get towards closure. I think in, in Alberta, to, to start with, uh, we know there's, there's over 94,000 inactive wells that need to move along to closure. Companies have been very, most companies have been very responsible doing this, doing that. This is going to help accelerate that. This and the liability management program that we announced in the summer will help facilitate that and accelerate that. So uh, this is a job creation program and a program to help clean up the environment. And I would just add to it, uh, you know, very early on when the pandemic hit uh, 11 months ago, uh, we recognized that we needed, you know, you, you had the pandemic, you had demand destruction hitting the industry as a result of that. And you also had the global price war that, that Russia and Saudi Arabia had initiated. And, you know, I think back to those those days, Minister Savage of us you know, texting back and forth. I mean, they were pretty, uh, for almost anybody in the industry, you remember seeing, you know, the barrel of oil, the price of the barrel going into the negatives. Um, it was it was a har harrowing time um, that affected hundreds of thousands of people right across this country. So, you know, the federal government, we were looking, uh, what can we do in the short term that will have long-term payoff and long-term dividends? And this fit the bill. Um, there was no sense in, in us trying to come up with some you know, new magic government of Canada program. This was working well on the ground. Um, you know, let's, let's beef it up uh, and, and let's provide a billion dollars more um, to the government of Alberta in its efforts to do this. And uh, it has been working and it is crucial because it is about the workers. It is about keeping them um, in play, doing very good work, very technical work that only, you know, that they can do um, because we need them. Uh, not only do we need to make sure that they're looked after, but, you know, as an investment, these are extremely talented people that we will need, uh, you know, when we, as we watch this, uh, this industry get a lower, hit lower emissions. Uh, these are the people who are going to do the work. So, so we need them working. Okay, and may I ask my follow-up? Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Thank you. The follow-up is for Minister Savage. I see a lot of cooperative language today between Alberta and Ottawa, and I wonder, are we to take this as a sign that you are abandoning your request for the federal government to apply sanctions to the USA over the Keystone XL permit cancellation? Well, I think uh, there's a number of areas that Minister O'Regan and I work very closely, closely on. That includes not only the site rehabilitation program, but it includes hydrogen, geothermal, small modular reactors, a uh, critical and rare earth mineral strategy. We work very closely together. And Minister O'Regan worked tirelessly with, uh, with our government, myself, and with uh, James Rajat, our representative in Washington, D.C., throughout this whole period period of time while we were, uh, uh, since the Biden administration came in. And I can't thank uh, Minister O'Regan enough for the support he's provided, uh, provided us with this. But uh, with, uh, w with respect to where the future is, we're, we're looking at all options. We're working, working, continuing to work with Minister O'Regan. We're continuing to work with, uh, with uh, James Rajat in Washington to, to understand where we, what, the future, what the future is, whether there's a path forward for, for KXL and what the future remedies are. This is going to take some time to sort out, but we're working on it. And we do have uh, Minister O'Regan's support with that. This I would just add that we, um, we, we worked, uh, as, as, as Minister Savage said, we worked extremely closely on KXL. Um, it, uh, we were brutally disappointed. And I remember on Inauguration Day, with the time difference, four and a half hours, or three and a half hours between uh, Minister Savage and myself, I got the news first and I had to call her and, and give her the, uh, the bad news. Um, we believe strongly in KXL uh, 2021. The Prime Minister did. Uh, we had calls with the Premier where he said as much. The project had changed demonstrably since 2015. 
Uh, it was net zero operations using uh, using wind and solar power for pumping stations. Uh, they were working closely with uh, First Nations, Métis on our side of the border and uh, Native Americans on theirs, um, and working very you know working with unions in order to get it built. This was a pipeline that was getting done right. Um, so we were brutally disappointed. But as I've said, I firmly believe uh, that the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. This is an administration. Uh, I believe that is closely aligned, uh, not only with the government of Canada, but with the government of Alberta and its resolve to lower emissions. I think that we can do good work with this administration, uh, and we will continue to work together as Team Canada to make sure that our priorities are met. This concludes our event. Thank you very much for joining us.